Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today I am showing how to do the governor mod on a VW 1.6 liter pump. This goes for the naturally aspirated and the turbo diesel. I am performing it on a naturally aspirated pump. If you have the turbo diesel pump that you are working with, it will just be very, very slightly different because of the extra LDA on top. Nothing about the spring change is different, simply just opening up your pump will be a little bit different. <sighs> okay, this is probably my weirdest filming angle I have ever done, so bear with me. But here, right here, is I believe a 9mm Bosch VE pump I got off of one of my other old rabbits them being either a donor engine or a donor car I bought previously, I have no idea. As you can see, I already have the pump in pieces. I took it apart last September? I don't know, it's been a long time. So today, before I put it back together, we're gonna clean it really well inside because I'm trying to use it on the car. And then we're gonna reassemble everything. Before we reassemble everything, we're gonna do the governor mod. Right here what I'm holding is your throttle actuator. So the governor mod is replacing this spring. We're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna take a look at the timing piston in here and see if we can't shim it to get better results. You might be at least a little bit bewildered the fact this is already apart. It's no big deal, I promise. You too can take it apart. It's putting it back together that is the trick. So, if you are looking to do this mod with me today, all you need to do, you don't have to take off all these extra pieces, but what you do need to take off is your throttle. It looks a lot like this, with some springs under it, and this part coming through. You're gonna need to disassemble this top part, disassemble the spring, put those aside, then you'll take this top off. This linkage will be connected still, so you'll want to disconnect the end of this linkage from your pump. Does that make sense? Let me make sure that's in camera. This will be, this, 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 this will be inside of there. There's a little snap ring. It's gonna be through this. So when you take it off, be careful. It's still all attached. You're gonna wanna probably just undo that and then take this throttle linkage off with the lid. So basically how these pumps work, is let's put this lid on for a minute to help our imaginations. You have your overall fueling set screw, which goes in right here, and then you have your throttle applicator, which goes in right there. So when you're hitting the gas, you're actually moving this linkage like that, and it's pulling on this end. And when you adjust your fuel screw, you are changing how far in this tip pushes. So now if we go inside, let's see what that's actually doing. Here's your overall fuel adjustment, right? It's pushing on this lever. Now, see it's moving this whole set of levers. So, and then within that is your throttle, which is this throw here. When you're, let's say it's backed all the way out, you'd have this range of motion. And let's say you put it all the way in, then you have this range of motion. Down in the bottom here, in the very bottom of your pump, is a collar that's attached to this lever. And if you open it up and you have it apart like this, you'll be able to see the collar. And basically how these pumps work is this collar covers the ports on your fuel plunger. So this collar entirely determines how much fuel goes into the car. The more this way everything goes, the more the collar gets pushed up the shaft, the more the ports get covered the more fuel goes into your car. So, if we looked at this and we turned our fuel adjustment screw all the way in and we had our throttle, you know, wide open, you have the gas on the floor, it would look like this. This would be all the way over and this would push all the way in. So that is max fuel on this pump. Now what we're also seeing in here is this little guy here. This is your governor. So when people say they do the governor mod, it turns out you actually don't really do anything to this part. What you're actually doing is changing how your throttle spring acts in relation to the governor. You can see here's your throttle, here's your fuel adjustment. Now this guy right here, this little tab, is 
your governor applicator. So as this spins, and this spins at the RPM that the pump does, so that's half the RPM of your crankshaft, this guy, these weights lift like that, and this guy gets pushed out. So that means as you're increasing RPM, the strength of these weights applying to this rod push all these plates back against themselves. So as we just said, when this is all this way, you're getting maximum fuel. And when it's all this way, you're getting minimum fuel. So what we're gonna do is basically change how these springs interact with this governor. Watch this. So the governor would push back on the throttle, uh, even if you're at full gas, and this would happen. So that even when you're twisting the throttle, you have your pedal on the floor, whoop, you're hitting a certain RPM, and bang, it's cutting fuel, it's allowing those plates to go the other way. So. We're replacing this long spring right here with something solid. So, two options. These I just got at a local hardware store. This right here is a nylon nut. A nylon, I think it was a spacer. This one's 5 16 And this right here is a double-sided connector. I think it's called a coupling nut. And I think this one is just quarter 20. Now, if you look, these are probably both valid options. I'm gonna go with the coupling nut if it fits well because steel always trumps over plastic, uh, but I think either would work. So as you can see, so this nut is a little longer than that spring. We're gonna go ahead and pull the spring out. We're gonna overlay it on the nut. We're gonna mark it, and then we're gonna cut this nut to be this correct length and insert it in the mechanism. You do not wanna remove the spring from the cage first and then measure it. This advice is completely wrong, and I actually went back and put it back in the cage to measure it, because if you think about it, when it's in that cage, it's actually compressed slightly, and the compressed length is the correct length for your shim. If you take the spring out of the cage, it is now not compressed and much longer than it is when it is in the cage. Thus, if you take it out and cut your shim to length, it'll be way too long when you try to put your shim back in the cage. So, before you take it apart, measure the spring length. So to get this contraption out of here, you're gonna need to pull on this, this top washer right there. And we're gonna pull that out, and then this mechanism here slides out through those notches. So it looks a little something like this. So that's out at the front. Do we see? Yeah. So that's out. Now all you gotta do, pull that forward, comes right out. See that? So now we have the accelerator spring out. Now, we're not concerned about any of this portion over here. This portion's fine. We are just looking at this spring over here. So that's held on with this teeny tiny clip at the top. Pull back on this top plate, like so, which gives us access to that snap ring by itself. Okay, like so. And then I'm gonna grab the back of this snap ring and try to pull it off. Try that again. Okay, snap ring is off. Set that down. Now carefully release spring tension. So here we go. There's a little washer too, don't lose that. Snap ring, washer, spacer, top head, spring. There's a little ridge the spring sat on that this one actually seats on very nicely. If I put it on this way, there's a little gap. And if I put it on this way, it's flush. I'm shooting to be flush. I'm gonna cut this to the correct length, and then if needed, I'll drill out the other end so it also sits flush. Okay, so I cut that off. It is now shorter. Is it short enough? I'm not sure yet. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in there and try it out, and then if needed, we'll just keep shaving it down with the ink grinder until it fits. All right, so I got this quarter inch drill bit on here, which should be just big enough to allow us to recess this other end nicely. And that's it. So that snap ring will fit in there now, but I still have that little washer. So, we're gonna take off just a little more. 
See that notch there? I'm gonna take this apart and clean it now, because this works. It is just a little bit short, so there's a teensy bit of play in here, but I think that's okay. So go ahead and reload this into this tray. Here we go. Like so. And then you gotta pull these couple of things out of the way because this is actually what goes against your throttle plate. There is a teensy bit of play in that and I'm not super stoked that there's that play, but it's not going to move like it did before. So, there we go. We did the governor mod. Really, it's the uh, throttle spring mod. So I just took that out. We'll see how this works out. Okay, we're back on the assembly bandwagon. Uh, I'm not going to use any new seals anywhere. Mainly because I don't have any. So, if I put this thing in the car and it leaks, I'm not surprised. In order to prevent easy possible leaks. I'm just gonna put a little sill glide on these uh, on this gasket. Sill glide is great. You guys should get it and put it on every rubber gasket you touch, assuming it's not gonna squeeze out of where it belongs. So these notches, I think the straight, the one in the middle, would be your neutral. Then there's a uh, advanced throttle and a reduced throttle. So I'm going to shoot for the advanced throttle, which means I'm going to index this a little aggressively. Going to spin this buggy 180 and continue pressing down so it doesn't pop off of its seat. Put this the correct way. And I want to pull this back a little. So I think it's entirely possible that this is already like. So right there is how much throttle throw I'm getting before I'm starting to pull the fuel adjustment lever there turn on the car with this setting like this and it could like immediately redline. So I don't have a bench test or anything. I am going to test this pump in the car. So I think I'm just going to keep that in mind. I'm going to turn this all the way down. Maybe turn this down some more. And then like fingers crossed it doesn't immediately rev to the moon. So I've never taken this part before. But my understanding is as it spins faster the pump's internal pressure increases and thereby moves this piston and this piston changes in injection timing. So more pump pressure equals further piston travel equals more advanced pump timing. So here's the inside of the timing cap, here's the timing spring, 
This is choke side. Here's the piston. So the piston receives fuel and it pushes against this cavity. So that makes the piston go the other way. The piston rotates the internal pump timing. So essentially, this is a dynamic timing advance built into these Bosch pumps. This spring is what pushes against it so it doesn't stay at high timing all the time. These washers go on either end of the spring to help it keep from digging into the softer metals. If we want to run more retarded overall timing, the move is to make the dynamic vents a little softer. So essentially, one way or another, we're going to make it easier to push this spring. One way to do that is to take out some of these shims. The other idea I'm having currently is to probably just shave the spring down a little. I'm probably going to do both and see what happens. I don't really care about this pump terribly much, so we're going to try shaving the spring down a little bit more than it is. And then we're going to try removing one of the washers that's on the piston side of things. We're going to leave this washer because it protects this aluminum from getting gouged. All right, so I shaved down the spring a bit. You can see here on the end and on the other end. The governor mod is pretty straightforward. It's gonna work no matter what. It'll be very obvious if it worked because it'll have good high-end power. What isn't gonna be as obvious is the timing advance that we screwed with. So I did keep the other shim, so I'm thinking maybe the best thing to do, because this is pretty accessible in the car, is simply to add that shim back in at a later date and try to feel the difference, you know? As a general disclaimer, I am not a professional pump rebuilder. Uh, if you follow these instructions and your car explodes or catches on fire or doesn't run, I am not responsible whatsoever. That said, this pump is going to go on my car and I'm going to try it, so we will see if what I did worked or not. Woo! Alright, so a few comments on doing the Governor Mod. Mainly that when I did it, and I didn't show this because that's incorrect, I'm now realizing, after shimming that one spring, I actually went back and welded the whole cage because I was like, sweet, none of the springs are going to move now. I've actually, spoilers, kind of had not the best feel from the governor modded pump. And I thought something was off, like it just seems less adjustable and it wants to rev hang more with seemingly not that much fuel. And I thought it was something to do with the pump itself, because again, it's been a while since this pump has been used, and it's been a part. But I'm coming to realize after reading some VWDiesels.net or something, that if you shim both springs, which is effectively what I did by welding the cage, it actually really negatively impacts your drivability in the exact ways I was seeing. So, video to come with the pump install and the actual driving results. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and take the governor back out and unweld the cage so it's properly just shimmed on that bigger spring, the longer spring. That way, it runs properly, but just for the purposes of science, because I already did it wrong anyways and filmed it, we'll have both. You'll get to see how it drives with both springs essentially replaced and then I'll fix it and we'll see how it drives with just one spring replaced. Unfortunately, I did not film how it drives with neither spring replaced, AKA pre-governor mod, but I mean, if you've owned a 1.6, you know exactly what it feels like. It feels like a slow ass car when you, 
<laughs> when you haven't done the governor. So that's what's going on. Also quick side comment, what makes a Giles pump a Giles pump is pretty much he does the governor mod. He changes the, the fuel pin in the LDA. I mean, I assume he has shins the timing plunger and some other junk. So the pump I reviewed last week already has the governor mod done by not me, done professionally, and the other junk I just mentioned, um, just for comparison purposes. So, to come is installing the pump and timing the motor and timing the pump and then test drives. And then after that, we're gonna go into another round of pump mods. So it's gonna be sick. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Please like and subscribe. Freaking have a good day out there.